Hi my friends, it's Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to be doing two cards uh, featuring some embossing paste and I'm going to show you how you can add a little bit of color to it using some Distress Oxide inks. So first I'm going to take my embossing paste. This is the one from Wendy Vicky and it's been gone so quite some time since I've used this stuff. I, I usually don't get out um, any mediums like this um, but I thought it was such a long time and um, I have quite a bit of different stencils to use so I thought it would be fun to get a couple of those out and make a couple of cards uh, today doing this technique. So I'm adding some color with my Distress Oxides like I mentioned and I'm using the Twisted Citron for the green and then um, I'm going to add a little bit to uh, this top layer too. Now whenever you're creating with the embossing paste one of the key things that you need to keep in mind is that you don't need to use a whole lot. Now, I probably could have used just a little bit more on this one that I'm going to be um, using on this first card, but it worked out in the end because obviously I wound up cutting it down and you will see that later in the video. But, um, so I'm just kind of, I was like actually kind of experimenting too because with the Distress Oxide inks, since it is a, um, it's not as, what am I trying to say? Um, it is not, it's a little bit more of a matte finish. You know, of course, whenever you use it, it's got that chalk finish, which which everybody has been saying, which is true. So the, the finish of, if you use this to color your embossing paste, it's going to give it a really matte finish as opposed to if you used like re-inkers or any kind of dye ink. Um, it gives a little bit more of a shine to your to to the um, embossing paste. So, but this time, the since I'm using this distressed oxide, it's going to give it a little bit more of a matte finish, and it does um, dry for some reason or another. It dries just a little bit quicker. So I had to work faster, not realizing that on the first card here, because it didn't. It kind of was drying quicker than. <laughs> I initially anticipated and so it didn't go as far as I thought I was going to get it to go far far on the card here but that's okay like I said it I it's it totally worked out because I did cut this first panel down but um, if you decide to do this know that if you're going to be using the distressed oxides if you're going to use the reinkers or just the ink pad know that you're going to have to work just a little bit quicker um, because I, because they it dries that with that ink it dries faster. Just my tip. Just wanted to let y'all know that in case y'all to try this at home. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and spread my green here onto the, the bottom part of my stencil here. This stencil here is from my favorite things. It's one of my favorites from them. And I also wanted to create kind of like an ombre-ish type look too. So I'm, I am purposely um, adding this into the green here to kind of mix the colors just a little bit. And it's, you know, it's like a brick pattern. So, um, you know, anytime that you look like on um, brick walls or whatever, you know, sometimes if they do like calligraphy, callig calligraphy, um, what am I trying to say? Not calligraphy, um, spray paint. You know what I'm trying to say? You know what you see on the walls? Not calligraphy, but the other. I can't think of right now. Uh, it's actually pretty early in the morning as I'm doing this voiceover, so my, my brain is not working at the moment. But, um, so it's kind of a messy, is what I'm trying to say. And so that's what kind of look I was kind of going for too. So, so I'm going to set that aside. I've kind of finished that off there. And I'm going to set that aside and let it dry because obviously you need to let this dry. Even though it was, you know, it's kind of dry to the touch whenever I took the stencil off, you still need to let it fully dry. And then I'm going to take my embossing paste once again and use this stencil. Now this stencil here is a newer stencil for me and it is a newer stencil. I believe it's from the latest release from Newton's Nook. And I really do like this one. I'm really into um, greenery, uh, leaves and stuff like that lately because I don't, I don't normally, I didn't have that um, in my stash. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did before using that Twisted Citron once again and then using, I would also using Peeled Paint and I'm going to, I was, I'm not going to mix, mix the colors together. I'm just going to um, add them more onto the actual panel here as I'm adding the embossing paste. So I'm going to use the Peeled Paint 
one first and then just get that all over that panel and you can see there I kind of did a little bit of a different thing I, I first um, I, I mean I know I cut some of the video out but I used I, I mixed one used it and then I mixed the other and then used it again instead of mixing them both together the colors together um, adding adding the colors what I'm trying to say together um, in the beginning because that way it worked a lot faster whenever I was creating both of these colors so I hope that makes sense so anyway um, I have removed the mask here you can see how really cool that looks and thought I would add some a little bit of shimmer to this now you won't be able to see it on the video it's very very faint but in person whenever you put toward it catch it toward the light it really does catch catch the light well so I thought it would be fun just to add a little bit of shimmer so I've got my little shimmer spritz spray here and I added that and like I said you can't really see it on the video but I'm more or, le more or less showing you the texture of this than the shimmer and shine so I went ahead and let those dry off camera and I did come back to it actually this was a couple of days later um, but I am going to now put these cards together and I went ahead and die cut um, the happy birthday this is the painted happy birthday from Simon Says Stamp as well as the hugs um, die from also Simon Says Stamp I did that the hugs from craft card stock and then I've got the a happy birthday from just some scraps of green and, and um, gray cardstock that I had in my stash. So I don't know the exact manufacturer or color names. They were just scraps that I had. So I'm taking a piece of uh, mermaid cardstock from Lawn Fawn here and making that a two size card. And I wanted to add, since I did cut that brick pattern down to a circle, I am going to um, add just a little bit of a background. So I'm going to take this happy, happy, happy stamp set from Lawn Fawn and taking the 2U sentiment and I'm going to create a background with this. Now, it did take me a little bit of time to do this. I'd say maybe, maybe five minutes, maybe at the most. But um, I'm going to take the coordinating ink for this and I, it's going to be a tone on tone and going to stamp this all over the panel. Now, at first I wanted to do this kind of in a di di diagonal, but I decided to get that and I just went ahead and did that all across the panel, but kind of scattered it. So I started in the middle here and then, um, and then I went back. And so I, I did it offset and then I, you know, as, as you will see the finished, you will see what I'm, I'm talking about here. But, um, so you can see I'm just kind of lining it up and I, I did the whole entire panel that way. And now I'm going to add um, my sentiments here. So I'm going to take my multi matte medium here. And I like to, I have the stick it adhesive. I think I've mentioned this in past videos, but I forget about it. So I usually just take my multi matte medium or kind of glue um, to do my die cuts like this whenever I'm stacking, stacking them one on top of the other. So I went ahead and did that for um, both of those sentiments there and just added the sentiments onto the embossing paste. And it really does adhere well with that multi matte medium, just to keep that in mind if you're wondering what adhesive, if you're going to use die cuts on top of embossing paste, that multi matte medium works really well for that. So I wanted to give this a little bit of dimension, that circle some dimension there. So I'm going to add some foam adhesive and get that all on the back of that. Once I do, you can see, now you can see my card base there, how kind of I, I stamped one and then offset the next line and, and did that all the way down. So um, that was, you know, it kind of gives it a little bit of a different look and not so symmetrical, if you will. So I'm going to take off the backings of my foam adhesive here and get that into place. I had a little bit of, um, as I was starting to put this onto my card, <laughs> I saw that I had a little bit of uh, foam adhesive sticking up a little bit further past my circle than I liked so um, I'm going to remove that and so I'm going to put this down here and then you'll see them when I take it back up but like I said I had some foam adhesive you really can't see it on video but I am taking that little bitty piece and taking that off before I add it to my card so once I do I'm going to get that into place and really press down make sure it's adhered and that will complete the first card there but you can see all of that really fun dimension and texture on that first card. It's it's really fun. So the next card, I'm going to keep it really simple. I've got a piece of craft card stock like I did the um, same for the die cuts. And I'm just going to do the same thing and score that into an A2 size card. And I always like to do top faux cards um, for a lot 
a, a lot lately. So I'm going to take my Nuvo uh, liquid glue here and um, put that all over the back of this panel here. And I like to do the Nuvo glue or, multi, you know, um, like that instead of the multi matte medium for back of the cards, the back of the panels, because um, for one, mine is running low and I wouldn't have had enough glue to do that. But <laughs> um, so I did the exact same thing. I stacked my die cuts on one on top of each other and then I just adhere that onto the card panel and that will complete the second card. So I hope you had fun guys in learning how to add some color to embossing paste. If you give us a try, I'd love to see what you do. So tag me on social media. I do have all my social media at the end of this video. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you on my next video. Bye-bye.